It is now September, and the summer movie season is now over. As the last video in this year's series, I will be going over how my predictions held up compared to the actual numbers. This won't be just comparing numbers, though. I'll be going over the reasons why a movie made what they made. Also, since some of the movies are still running, the numbers will be from around September 10th. So for some of them, if you were to compare them now, what I predicted, they might be a bit different. Now, if you're new here, here's the grading system I have for myself. One is for domestic and one is for the worldwide box office. I'm not going to name them off one by one, but I'll just post it up here real quick so you can get an understanding of it. I'm going to go month by month, just how I did the prediction videos. So first up is May. Now, it came out a few days before May, but it was too big of a movie to ignore. Avengers Infinity War. Coming into the year, Avengers Infinity War was the most highly anticipated movie, and it turns out it was indeed. Breaking records left and right, with the biggest being the biggest opening weekend for America. Infinity War came in at $678 million domestic and $2.04 billion worldwide, compared to my prediction of $680 million domestic and $1.73 billion worldwide. While I had a good domestic prediction, I obviously underestimated the international hype a bit, especially in China and in India. So with this, Infinity War has made Disney a crap ton of money. But with the overwhelming positive reception to the movie, makes Avengers 4 next year an exciting movie to predict. Final grade for Infinity War is an A domestically and an F worldwide. After Infinity War is Life of the Party, a Melissa McCarthy movie, I predicted 70 million domestic and 110 million worldwide, and it underperformed on both ends coming in at 52 million domestic and 65 million worldwide. Reviews were more mixed on this one compared to the other McCarthy movies, and another factor that played into it was that, at least internationally, it was not released in that many countries. Final rating for Life at the Party is an A domestically and a C worldwide. The next comic book movie of the summer is up with Deadpool 2, and I was remarkably close. I predicted 305 million domestic and 745 million worldwide, and it finished at 318 million domestic and 734 million worldwide. I expected it to do around this much because of the tougher competition it had compared to the first Deadpool that was released in February two years ago. However, I feel if the next movie I'm talking about actually followed my predictions, it would have hurt Deadpool 2 a lot, so I think Fox should be happy that their bet paid off. Final grade for Deadpool 2 is both an A domestically and an A worldwide. Now is the first major bomb of the summer, and one I did not expect it's Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, I didn't expect Solo to kill it compared to the other recent Star Wars movies with my prediction of 420 million domestic and 910 million worldwide, which, while really good, would have been the lowest of the Disney Star Wars movies so far. However, coming right out of the gate, Solo tripped, stumbled, and never recovered with a 103 million opening for a Memorial Day weekend. Now, obviously, these numbers mean I get an F both domestically and worldwide. So what happened here? Well, a lot of people have said from the beginning that they were not interested in a solo movie without Harrison Ford, and usually I brush that off because people complaining on the internet, it's weak. No one really follows through, but apparently this time, it was real. This, combined with the fact that people were more interested in Infinity War and Deadpool 2, also hurt it. While this is nothing concrete, solo flopping on Memorial Day is now another movie in a trend of Disney movies failing on Memorial Day. This list includes Tomorrowland in 2015, Alice Through the Looking Glass in 2016, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 in 2017, and now Solo in 2018. What makes me curious is how the next one will do, which is the live-action Aladdin opening Memorial Day weekend in 2019. Alright, May is wrapped up. Let's move into June, with the first one being Ocean's 8. The female-led heist movie turned out to be a mildly successful one for Warner Brothers, with 139 million domestic and 291 million worldwide, off a $70 million budget, not including marketing. This is compared to my really close prediction of 125 million domestic and 285 million worldwide. Just an interesting fact, compared to the rest of the franchise, Ocean's 8 is now the second highest grossing ocean movie domestically, but is still in last place worldwide. It seems the previous movies were a big hit internationally, with the first one, Ocean's 11, making 450 million worldwide, almost half a billion back in 2001. So for Ocean's 8, I get an A in both categories. The next summer blockbuster is one that many, including myself, have been waiting for, even longer than Infinity War, and the numbers showed. The Incredibles 2. Now, I expected this to do big. At 450 million domestic, and just over a billion worldwide, would have put it just over Finding Dory as the biggest Pixar movie worldwide. However, I failed to realize how deep the nostalgia was for the first one, as the sequel came in at just over 600 million domestic, and 1.167 billion worldwide, giving me a solid F in both categories. 
Now, it was not just this nausea that played a role. That mostly influenced the first two weeks, but the movie legged itself from a 180 million opening to over 600 million domestic. So what other factors were in play? Besides nostalgia, the main factor for the movie doing so well was that when you break it down, it is an animated superhero movie. Both animated and superhero movies have been big for years now, so now that when you combine both, that's a moneymaker waiting to happen. And Disney cashed in on it. It also helped that the reviews for it were good, not great like the first one, but it wasn't terrible or seemed like a cash grab, so that helped. Also with this, Disney is now the first studio to have three $600 million plus movies domestically in a year with this, Infinity War, and Black Panther. Next up is uh, Warner Brothers comedy Tag. I had this one pegged at 55 million domestic and 120 million worldwide, and I was very close domestically. The results for Tag are 54.5 million domestic and 77 million worldwide. Now for this one, apparently it just did not do good internationally as it opened up in a lot more countries compared to Life of the Party. However, that does not seem to be an issue for Warner Brothers because the budget for this film was not that big. So along with selling TV rights to the movie, along with Blu-ray and digital sales, Tag should make a decent but small profit for the studio. Overall, I get an A domestically and a D worldwide. The next summer blockbuster is up with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. My prediction was 390 million domestic and 1.2 billion worldwide, and it came in at 415 million domestic and 1.3 billion worldwide. It performed lower compared to the first Jurassic World, however, that was to be expected because the first had a pent up demand of over 10 years since the last Jurassic Park movie. What surprised me is that it got to 1.3 billion, especially with the mixed reviews this movie got on Rotten Tomatoes, for example. It is the worst reviewed one by critics in the franchise with a 49%, beating out Jurassic Park 3 by one point. So I get a B domestically and an F worldwide. Next is a follow-up to one of the better movies of tw from 2015, Sicario 2. Now I have this doing around as well as the first one, with 50 million domestic and 90 million worldwide, and it came in at 49.9 million domestic and 73 million worldwide. Now I was really, really close domestically, but apparently internationally it fell off, making over $10 million less compared to the first one. I guess in a busy summer season, people in other countries either did not have the time or were not interested in watching it. Remember, the first one came out in September in 2015, after the summer movie season died down. So for Sicario 2, I get an A domestically and a B worldwide. For the last movie in June, we have Uncle Drew. Now I knew this one would be a small one with 40 million domestic and 65 million worldwide. However, it turned out to be smaller with 42 million domestic and 44 million worldwide. That's right, only an extra $2 million internationally. Now, this does not mean that it bombed outside of the United States. I looked and saw that the studio Lionsgate only released this in eight other territories. I guess the studio also believed that the movie would not have that much appeal outside of America and decided to not even try in other countries. Guess it makes sense because it limits the potential loss. Final rating for Uncle Drew is an A domestically and a B worldwide. With June wrapped up now, we move over to July and the first movie up is The First Purge. Now the fourth movie in the franchise, I expected it to take a step back domestically, but worldwide to be the highest grossing one yet, and I was right. I thought it would do 70 million domestic and 120 million worldwide, and it came in at 69 million domestic and 134 million worldwide. This makes the movie the third highest grossing domestically behind the Purge election year and the Purge anarchy. However, worldwide, this is number one by over $15 million. So I get an A domestically and an A worldwide. It's blockbuster time, more specifically superhero time, and even more specifically Marvel time with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Releasing around the same time of the first one back in 2015, I expected the sequel to ride the high of Infinity War and get a bump up, and it did, a bit smaller than what I was expecting though. I expected 245 million domestic and 670 million worldwide, however instead it grossed as of now 214 million domestic and 601 million worldwide. Now it did recently open in some Asian markets including China and Japan, so it will still gross a little more worldwide. It shouldn't be enough to change the grade though. Now I think this just comes down to two things. I expected too much from it, and that for the most part this does not continue the story from Infinity War that people wanted to see. If you look at the numbers and compare it to the first one, it made more than the first one both domestically and worldwide, so in that sense it is a success and it's one of the bigger movies this summer. It's just kind of weird that Disney's having such a fantastic year with some of these movies that an Ant-Man sequel making over 200 million domestic is not really talked about. So that will be a C domestically and a D worldwide. The Incredibles 2 is not the only animated movie this summer as Sony brought out Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. 
Now based on the first two movies, and the fact that this would be the last big animated movie for a while, I thought this would be the biggest one of the franchise both domestically and worldwide. So for the numbers I predicted 190 million domestic, and 500 million worldwide. And it has come in at 163 million domestic, and 487 million worldwide. So this was a mixed result for me. While it got really close to 500 million, and is the highest grossing movie of the franchise worldwide, I feel it underperformed a bit domestically, and is actually just under the second one by a few million. Final grades for Hotel Transylvania is a uh, B domestically and an A worldwide. The Rock is back in his next movie that is totally not Die Hard with Skyscraper. Now Jumanji did great, but that should be considered an anomaly, and the last Rock film, Rampage, did pretty good. So I was expecting it to do more around that with 95 million domestic and 380 million worldwide. I was wrong quite a bit here, with it actually pulling in 67 million domestic and 293 million worldwide. Now obviously that is a C domestically and an F worldwide. So what I was counting on internationally was China carrying this film a lot, and it didn't at 98 million, and domestically the average reviews did not help. The public consensus on this was that it looked like The Rock wanted to do a Die Hard movie, and the reviews were like, yeah that's about it, nothing special here. The next movie is another one I was really wrong on with, and that was Mamma Mia Here We Go Again. I was thinking I was, it was going to do similar to the first one from 10 years ago with 155 million domestic and 600 million worldwide. However, I overestimated the hype just a bit, um, as it did quite a bit less at 119 million domestic and 376 million worldwide. An F for both categories. Next up is The Equalizer 2, the first sequel Denzel Washington has ever done, and looking at his past movies, I expected it to be the same. A strong domestic and weak international at 75 million domestic and 180 million worldwide. Turns out I was right, but not right enough. It was even stronger domestically and weaker internationally, with 101 million domestic and 173 million worldwide. I will say that for a rated R action movie in the middle of summer, Denzel did really good domestically going up between Ant-Man and Mission Impossible. Final rating is a B domestically and an A worldwide. The last animated movie was a small one, and I thought it would break out as Teen Titans go to the movies, this was a bit harder to predict, but I went with the idea that animated movies do well over the summer, and that kids enjoy the show enough for it to make some money. My prediction was 60 million domestic and 140 million worldwide. Instead, it came in at a much lower 28 million domestic and 46 million worldwide, giving me a C domestically and an F worldwide. The last movie up for July is also the last big blockbuster for the summer, and that is Mission Impossible Fallout. My last few predictions haven't been that good, but Fallout has fixed that a bit by becoming the biggest Mission Impossible movie worldwide. I had it coming in at 220 million domestic and 720 million worldwide, and is now currently at 212 domestic and 724 worldwide at the time of this recording. An A in both categories. It will also take first place in the franchise domestically in a few days if it hasn't already, since it just needs 3 million to pass Mission Impossible 2. That's right, what is considered the worst in the franchise has been the highest grossing one here in America. This has been a great win for everyone, Paramount gets a summer hit, something they really really needed, and Tom Cruise shows he can still get people to show up for his movies, and redeems himself from his last year's summer movie performance, The Mummy. We are now in the month of August, the last month, and with it a lot of smaller movies, and a lot of movies I miscalculated. Let's start off with Disney's Christopher Robin. I predicted 120 million domestic and 300 million worldwide under the idea that nostalgia for Winnie the Pooh would help. It didn't. As of now, it is at 91 million domestic and 143 million worldwide, giving me a B domestically and an F worldwide. Depending on the budget for this movie, Disney will probably make a profit off of it after it comes out on Blu-ray and digital. For the summer movie season, August is the time where a lot of movies are put out to die and this year is no exception with The Darkest Mind. A teen movie in the vein of The Hunger Games and Divergent has arrived too late for anyone to care and Fox knew. I predicted a 35 million domestic gross and 100 million worldwide and it managed to do even worse than that with a 12 million dollar domestic and 40 million worldwide. For now at least these types of movies are dead and this gives me a B domestically and an F worldwide. Next up is the female comedy movie, The Spy Who Dumped Me, which I thought would do okay, did not. My prediction was 65 million domestic and 135 million worldwide, and it came in at 33 million domestic and 63 million worldwide, giving me a C domestically and an F worldwide. The next movie put out to die is Slenderman, which I had completely thought it was going to bomb at 15 million domestic and 40 million worldwide. However, it did do slightly better than expected with 29 million domestic and 47 million worldwide. 
This surprised me, however, and showed that people love to see horror movies, even shitty ones like how this one was reviewed. Overall, for Slenderman, I get an A in both categories. We thought summer blockbusters were over, but there was one lurking and now just popped up its head with the Meg. Now I thought this would do okay with 45 million domestic and 240 million worldwide. It easily blew that out of the water with 131 million domestic and 492 million worldwide, almost half a billion dollars. I expected it to do okay because recently a lot of these American Chinese co-productions have not done that well. Take for example The Great Wall. But what seemed to have happened is I underestimated how much people wanted to see a shark movie and it also helped that the only movie that so far in August that has made any money was Christopher Robin. So I easily get an F in both categories. A generic action movie is up next with Mile 22 starring Marky Mark. Now out of all the smaller movies this month I went with this one making the most money domestically and I was quite wrong. My prediction was 55 million domestic and 120 million worldwide and it came up short with 35 million domestic and 53 million worldwide. I guess people did not want a generic action movie to end their summer. Grading wise I just barely get an A domestically and an F worldwide. We are now at the last movie I predicted for the summer, Crazy Rich Asians. Now I expected this to do well with the Asian American crowd here due to representation, which is very important, but holy shit I did not expect it to be this big. I went in with 50 million domestic and 125 million worldwide prediction. Good, but nothing special. However, with three straight weekends of over 20 million dollars, it has now grossed 134 million domestic and 164 million worldwide. People came out in force to see this movie, and I guess it along with Black Panther shows representation matters, and if you make a good movie with it in mind, people will support it by watching it. So while I get an F domestically, I actually get an A worldwide since most of the money so far is made domestically. Anyway, this has been a very long video, but I have finished going over the results and how I did. Here are my totals for the domestic market, skewed more toward A's with 12, 4 B's, 3 C's, no D's, and 6 F's. Worldwide is a bit more balanced with 9 A's, 1 B, 2 C's, 3 D's, and 11 F's. Now here's the chart for the overall total. I think what happened besides just getting a few movies completely wrong like the Meg is that it is hard to determine what audiences like in other countries and how many markets is a movie going to open in. This is something I will have to take under consideration when making my predictions for next year. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to do this again next year.